What's good YouTube? In this video, we're going to be showing you how to do reactions in OBS Studio. It's very easy, very simple. I already showed you how to do reactions in OBS Streamlabs. It's very similar, but I'm just going to be showing you how it looks in OBS Studio. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to File, and then we're going to go to Settings. You want to make sure that your video tab is set to how you want it. If you want to record 1080p, just do the drop down and choose 1080p. If you want to do 720p, do the drop down and choose 720p make these two match put your frame rate at 60 fps if you want it to be 60 or put it at 30 if your computer is not working too great with the 60 fps as far as your output you want to go to output for recording you want to make sure that your bit rate is something decent 40,000 is what i use you don't have to use 40,000 you can use 10,000 if you'd like or something like that but you don't want to go too low like 3,000 bit rate for you know a 720p 60 or a 1080p video that'll be too low and then you also want to make sure what you're recording with so as you can see right here i'm recording with my nvidia graphics card that's what i like to record my videos with because it looks great because you're giving it a certain amount of bitrate that's required to make it look nice with that graphics card so i choose that but if you don't want to use this for your recording you can just use your h.264 and you can just do your settings kind of like the settings are for this streaming just instead of 3500 put your bit rate a little bit higher and then for your cpu you can just test it out you don't want to really start off on ultra fast because that's not going to give you the best and most crisp quality if you do have to use ultra fast you want to give it more bit rate than you think you need so it can have more to work with but with less bit rate once you start dropping and going lower on this list it'll actually start to look way better so like say for instance if you only could use a small amount of bit rate for your stream you'd want to be trying to stream it as fast or faster some computers can handle medium it just depends but once you go to ultra fast it'll start looking a little bit more pixelated and not that crisp this right here you don't got to worry about that that's just some secret sauce settings that i got from epos fox off of one of his videos as far as your audio tab you want to make sure that you're choosing the actual desktop audio device that you want to be using select that if you leave it on default it may or may not give you issues if it doesn't give you issues everything's fine it's cool and then as far as your mic you want to choose your mic or if default works you can leave it as default but i just go ahead and choose the mic next up what you want to do is you want to hit the plus icon and add your cam so all you got to do is hit the plus icon right there and then you want to go to video capture device select this and then you want to name it what you want it to be named and then once you do that you'll see your camera pop up right here and all you have to do is select what you want to be doing so i'm doing 1080p so i want it to be 1080p and this webcam can only do 30 frames per second so i choose 30 frames per second and then you want to make sure with this particular webcam the logitech c920 you want to put it on mjpeg because if you change it to other stuff sometimes it might not work right it may have a black screen and if you have that black screen you just want to make sure you come in and choose mjpeg i don't know why it works but it works color space you want to put this on 709 color range you want to put it on partial and then buffering you want to disable it even if it's your capture card for your elgato anything like that just always disable that and then down here you can choose a certain audio device for this if you want to and you can check mark it and it'll make sure that it's using that with that so as you can see right here there's the microphone or you can choose your actual webcam so if you want to make sure your cam is linked up with a certain one you can choose that next up is your display capture already using the display capture as you can see but what you want to do is you want to hit the plus icon again and then you want to go to display capture once you go to display capture you can name it whatever you need to be naming it and what will pop up once you name it is this right here it'll pop this window up and then all you have to do is select now for whatever reason since this new update i don't know what the heck is going on but it changed how you do get your display capture to work in obs studio you should be able to do it through your nvidia graphics card but that's not the case anymore so what you want to do is you want to come over to the start window and then you want to go type in graphic settings and then once you go to graphic settings it's going to pull this up right here if you don't see obs studio right there you can just simply browse it right here and then go to where it's installed on your computer and once you pull it up right here you're going to want to hit options on it and then you're going to, want to choose power saving if you do not choose power saving it's not going to act right probably i've never been able to get it to act right with the gtx in my computer exit out of obs and then open it back up 
and then your display capture will be working again. And there you have it. You're ready to click on the videos, do some reactions. You can also, you know, just click on video files that you already have on your computer and just go ahead and watch those if you want to. You can do this on live streams or you can do this in just straight recording, whatever you want. If this video helped you out, please turn the like button, consider subscribing, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.